Alex Scott out there. Welcome back to my channel, guys. Welcome back to part two of the 2016 Escalade, Cadillac Escalade saga. The reason I call it a saga, if you're not familiar with the story behind this video or if you didn't come from the first video, um, the customer, actually one of my YouTube customers, um, he saw my very first Cadillac Escalade video I did. So check that one out. Um, but I left you guys hanging, so I didn't really give you like the after the before and after so a lot of guys want to see the after so this is going to be an after video um i'm gonna post that link in the description i said that right yes <laughs> <laughs> or we'll put it up on the screen yeah i put it up on the screen for my very first one how to diagnose this uh, but anywho this is the saga this lifter completely fell apart let me show you what it's supposed to look like so as you can see it is pretty bad the, the roller came off all the needle bearings came off scored up the um the lifter cylinder pretty bad the customer took it to a machine shop and got it fixed um so it's it that's all good it's back how i like it um, real um, quick shout out to the subscriber or commenter that let us know that as of december 21st of last year 2021 that um Cadillac, um, there's a lawsuit, I guess, against yes. um, GM for, because this is a common issues, and this is a thousands of dollar repair, and it's just not good for the consumer. So we'll put that comment up there. Shout out to you. Yeah, I really uh, appreciate Let me know because I didn't know. Now I can point my customers back to the dealership mm -hmm. so they can get their truck fixed properly. Uh, but I'm going to run you guys through the process of me putting this engine all back together. Now, this is not gonna be a, a tutorial. This is just a follow along. Um, so I'm not gonna cover everything. As you can see, I have all my parts laid out um, that way, cause I'm gonna have the camera on my head and I don't wanna be all over the place. Got all my parts laid out. These are the motor mounts, water pump um, and a vacuum pump. Now, my floor is clean for you guys that not, may think, oh, dust gonna get in stuff. No, my floor is just swept it, so it's all good. Um, but these are some of the parts that's going on last, along with the exhaust manifolds. Now, these are old head bolts. I have new head bolts, so we're not gonna be using those. So, the, this is my push rod and rocker assembly um, area. So, Just a quick reminder, um, the customer, he wants to keep all his old stuff, so. I will box everything up. Yep. Now, back over here, the cam, these are the uh, lifter retainers. They hold the lifters so it won't twist. Uh, it's very important that you replace these because plastic get brittle. It'd be ashamed if you do all this work and, you know, the lifter retainers, it's not doing their job and twist and mess up some stuff. So here's the old chain and guide i'm not going to be using that I have new chain new guide um the oil pump they never give issues so i'm re you know keeping the oil pump um high pressure fuel pump right here um that is still good we're not going to be replacing that all right back up to the top here <clears throat> i have my torque spec sheet very important when you're doing any type of engine work it's very important that you torque everything down, dealing with <clears throat> internal engine parts and working in a clean area. You don't want dirt or grimy stuff to get in there and you can just ruin stuff and scratch things up. Um, over here, as you can see, I have my lifters soaking. I am using milling lifters. So I like to pre-soak them in oil before I put them in. Um, my cylinder heads, valve cover gaskets, my valley pan here. Um, I did clean everything up off camera. Um, like I said, it wasn't a tutorial, so I didn't show everything. My new lifter retainers, my new chain guide. Um, I am using the old, um, using the same gears. Uh, these gears, they never give any issues along with the phasers on this engine. So all that stuff will begin reused. I did inspect it, it's perfectly fine. Um, here are the good stuff, the gaskets. Very important, get a gasket kit if you're gonna be doing something like this. And the brand new cam supplied by the customer. And he got it from the dealership. Yes, very important. <clears throat> Last but not least, 
It's my oil pan and my front cover. Um, and I have these new O-rings. Every gasket in this engine just about is gonna get replaced. The reason I say just about because um, you have some seals in the head uh, that you have to send off, take them to the machine shop, send them off, and get the valve seals replaced. The valve seals are fine, so we're not gonna touch that. Jumping right into it, guys. I'm gonna install my cam first, but before I do, I have some camshaft assembly lube. You wanna make sure you don't go in dry with this stuff. Um, so, come on, come on out. So, just oil up everything. And I'm gonna spread this out with my hand, by the way. I'm just getting it on there. You would make a horrible cake decorator. <laughs> I know, right? You're That's in the right business. Not a cake decorator. <laughs> Ooh, this stuff is tacky. And this is all it takes. Just a thin layer of stuff. Nothing too serious. And you're going to do each one all yeah. the way up to the top? That way, when the initial start up, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna have some protection, pretty much. That's basically what this is for. You don't want the initial start up to be dry. <clears throat> um, that's how parts get scored up. So oil and lubricants is very important for your engine. Yes. I'm asking for myself. Learn something new every day. I know how to do everything except, except fix it. Because <laughs> <clears throat> when you're thinking about it, like, how's all these metal parts working together? Like, isn't metal on metal touching? No, because you have oil. Um, or in the case of a new rebuild, you have assembly lube or some kind of assembly lube. And that way it, it creates a barrier between the bearing or, let's just say bearing, and it creates a thin layer. So it's actually riding on a thin layer of oil um, that's why parts get destroyed when you run your vehicle out of oil all right guys wifey had to go attend to the baby so i'm switching to first person view i've got the cam all lubed up now when you're putting this stuff in you got to be very gentle just take your time keeping a straight hand well straight cam <laughs> Don't rush the process. Bam, that's it. Easy does it. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is grab my cam retainer. Inspect it, make sure everything is good, make sure it's clean. Always thread in stuff by hand. <clears throat> now guys, if you didn't know, this is one of my favorite things to do. It's just so relaxing. Um, just putting together a motor. If I didn't mention, these are 11 foot pounds. Uh, 
I may have to go because it's so loose. I'm gonna go grab some Loctite because these boats did have Loctite on them just to keep be on the safe side. All right, like before, threading stuff by hand. Put a little seal plus lock tight on there. Don't need much. All right, next step, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and install my timing chain and gear set. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. With this, I just find it easier to kind of put everything in place. Like so, and line everything up. There's a dot on this right there. Hopefully you can see that on camera. That lines up with this dot. So bam. <clears throat> now, it's very important dealing with phasers. Um, this, this phaser, they're made to twist. Made to twist while this back piece, the gear portion is stationary. So that allows the timing to be advanced and you know retarded as it as it pleases. So going back on to make sure it's in the neutral position. You want to make sure these dots is in between this arrow pointing down. You don't want nothing to twist on you. <clears throat> and yep, it went like that. So squeeze you on in there. my crank would be in the wrong spot so I gotta turn that all right I have everything but a half inch drive so I'm gonna go grab that Okay, I'm back with my ratchet. All right, so I need to be about right there. Let's grab the assembly. Now, there's a pinion in here that has to match that so I have to be very mindful of where that pin is all right appears that I got it my cam bolt in and I know everything is lined up properly. Well, in fact, this is the same as this. All right, 
double check everything. Now you're not supposed to pull on this, so try to grab it from right here if you can. So, yes, everything feels good. Timing. Time and chain tensioner. Chain tensioner about twenty two foot pounds. Seems like a lot. And when you're using the torque wrench, you have the clicking type and you have the electronic type. So you want to come down until it either vibrate or click and stop. Do not keep going. With this one, it'll turn red if you keep going. Um, but as you can see, I just got it torqued down to 22. And just double check everything once you finish. All right, now the next thing I'm gonna do <clears throat> is turn, pull my pin and double check my timing marks. And everything is lined up perfect. All right. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, scrap my oil pump. Give it a quick little wipe down. And slide that on up on there. Now putting this on, you gotta be mindful that there are little grooves that line up with the, the crank sprocket and you wanna get them in them grooves which is posing a little problem right now, but I'm gonna get it. All right. What keeps happening is this keeps falling. I'm trying to get it in the groove, so I'm just gonna pick up with a flathead. There we go. <clears throat> These bolts are 18 foot pounds. So I'm going to torque these and I'm going to jump back on my phaser and torque it.
high degrees. Got this all torqued down. The next step is to flip the engine upside down. Um, but before I do that, I have to put on my front cover. That's the next step. All right, so came out a little bit too strong at first. I just want a little light coat. And sits down in these little dowel pins. You want to make sure they're in there. Alright. Okay, let's grab the bolts. seated I'm gonna torque them down to 18 oh I forgot this one 18 foot-pounds that's the front bolt um, the front cover torque spec Okay, very last one. And it helps if you do this in a crisscross pattern, just to make sure everything is nice and even. You know, sort of like this. Just don't forget which bolt came from where. Next thing. I'm going to flip it over and switch to the bottom end. Nice and easy. Come on. Next thing I'm going to do is prep my pan to go on the engine. Very gently remove the old gaskets. Now, torquing this down don't matter. Neither does this windage tray. Sorry about the sniffles, guys. My wife is always telling me to take my medicine. I don't listen sometimes. All 
All right, it's time for the glue. Got my oil pan ready to go on. Oh yeah. Sit down nice and gently. Okay, <clears throat> last bolt to be torqued down. And all these pan bolts down here, the 13 millimeters, are um, 18 foot pounds. Back here was 89 inch pounds. And I didn't remove these, so <clears throat> I didn't bother to look up the specs. All right. So we're just going to double check everything. Everything looks good. I probably should go ahead and put my motor mounts on. Looking at this, it should have a right hand side and a left hand side. So hopefully my memory served me correctly. Like I mentioned, guys, this is a big, long process because you really have to take your time. And put together things in order. <clears throat> Right. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, so this is just a a, uh, a a retainer, so it's not you know it's not crucial that it's torqued down. It's just a little keeper, so it won't twist. <clears throat> the next thing the next thing I'm gonna do is install my lifters. So I'm going to put my DOD lifters in first. So how you know they're DOD, where the DOD lifters go, it's easy because you have these oil passages that correspond to the lifter hole. So DOD, DOD, DOD. So this goes like that. <laughs> Guess it's time to get lotiony. Then I'll load it up. Bam. So messy. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is check, make sure everything is good. It's good, <clears throat> it's good. Now, there's some 10 millimeters for these, the lifter retainer screws. Now I'm not gonna torque these down either because they just, Hold down the retainer. I'm just gonna snug them down by hand. 
Now, if you're not used to this sort of thing, <clears throat> use a torque wrench because you don't want to snap these off into the block. Or, let me see if I can wrist tight. So, that motion. Uh, for the head gasket. <clears throat> so this goes front. appears to be the wrong air gasket. Oh, I hate when this happens. So, we have the wrong air gasket, good people, so I'm gonna have to find, I'm gonna have to find the right air gasket before I can continue. Um, it's one of the things I let the customer buy, um, and now I'm gonna have to get the right stuff, unfortunately. That's why I normally like to supply my own parts. Because, you know, when I get into motion, I don't like to stop and, you know, try to hunt down different parts. So I will see you guys when I get the right head gasket and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm back. Um, had a little problem. Customer got the wrong part, so I had to order the correct part which is this is the part number um the head this is a head gasket kit that i had the special order so now we're going to proceed to putting on the head gaskets <clears throat> now what some people like to do is spray these down um i don't find that necessary if you cleaned everything up um, but you still can if you want, if it makes you comfortable. Spray it down with some kind of copper spray or whatever the people use. The next step is to put the valley pan back on. Now, I already replaced this gasket off camera, so it is new. I like to go back with all new gaskets. Okay, <clears throat> the next step that I'm gonna do is put on my cylinder head here. So we're gonna very gently place it on there. <clears throat> and how you know you got it lined up right? Well, the high pressure fuel line is gonna connect. <clears throat> 
special bolt. First thing I'm gonna do is just seat all my um, head gasket bolts by hand. The kitty's over there just fighting, play fighting. <laughs> finish tying these down and I will cut back in when got these all tightened down by hand all right have everything snugged up so the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and torque my head bolts um, the internal hex is gonna be the last one it has its own torque sequence so the first pass is 59 foot-pounds And basically, what I'm trying to accomplish here is stretching the bolts in place because they're st stretch bolts. And I am doing these in a specific order, which I have right here in front of me. So I just did one, two, then I'm going to come back up here to three. And when using a torque wrench, you just keep, keep coming down, keep coming down until you hear a click. Or in my case, it beeps at me. All right, five. All right, so the next step is the degrees. So it's going to be 90 and 60 versus the internal hex is 59, the initial torque, 90 and 40. So I'm about to do degrees now, 90. Same order. This is wonderful, this torque wrench, because you can come back up and it'll save the degrees. Right. I literally just forgot there's just one um, internal hex. So this is actually a regular 15 again. So torque that down to 59. Uh, let's see. Turn it 90 degrees.
Well, I don't have my workout for today. I can tell you that much, good people. All right, that was a workout, but got everything torqued down. Ugh. Next step. Installing the push rods. And I'm double checking them while I'm installing. You wanna make sure these are not bent, damaged, or any kind of way. Okay, next step, I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit, but the rockers, I already did the other side. I kind of forgot to hit record, so sorry, good people. And let me zoom out a little bit. So the next step, like I mentioned, just gonna install all these rockers. I'm hand threading everything. Never want to go in with power tools. That's how stuff gets stripped out. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is torque these down to 22 foot-pounds. All right, next thing is the valve cover. <clears throat> so this one is the left-hand side. It indicates left hand. I've already put the I've already put the gasket in place off camera. <clears throat> All right. Perfect. Now, let me try to retrieve the bolts. Um, Like always, we're gonna thread <clears throat> and thread them in by hand. Starting to look like an engine again. This is the exciting part about doing this. All right, it's time for torquing. 
these are going to be 18 foot pounds. I don't think that's right. Eighty nine inch pounds. That sounds more right. Okay, now it's time to torque these valve cover bolts. And the torque spec for them is 89 inch pounds. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is install my fuel line, high pressure fuel lines here. I'm just going to give them a nice little, nice little snug. They really don't take all that. And I do believe it's a 17. guys coming down to a closing the last thing i'm actually gonna put on because um i actually need to replace the exhaust manifold bolts is 10 of them and they're actually stretch bolts so i'm gonna go on with new bolts when you're doing big big builds like this well this is sort of a build um it's so many bolts and screws you can't think of everything so that's one of the things I forgot. So the last thing I'm gonna attach is the vacuum pump. This is a vacuum pump on this engine. Um, the only reason I'm not putting on the um, the water pump on it and the crank pulley because it, it's it's gonna be a lot easier. It's gonna be a lot easier to install the engine with that stuff off. So, I'm gonna go ahead and order some exhaust manifold bolts and, you know, put an exhaust manifold on. That is, that is nothing. So I probably won't put that on on camera. These bolts are 18 foot pounds and I do need an extension. Let me go ahead and warm up my torque wrench. This is one of these torque wrenches that have to sit still to calibrate itself for the degrees. So, 18. Now, for some of you GM guys out there, please write in the comment and let me know why they just didn't pull a vacuum <clears throat> from the engine. This is vacuum pumps or, um, or stuff that you see on diesel engines, not gasoline, because gasoline engines make their own vacuum. Diesels, they don't make vacuum. So you'll need a vacuum pump for a diesel. So my GM tech or uh, GM guys out there, let me know why this engine has a vacuum pump. it i got it all put back together um we're saving the intake manifold 
for last because it's a lot easier to get to the um, bell housing bolts with the intake manifold off. Um, I just have this hanging up there. I'm going to take it back down uh, when I get the new bolts. Um, I am ready to hand this engine over to my engine bandit, Harry. He's going to stick it back in there, and I'm going to have a, a few... I'm going to try to get most of the install, um, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to try to get most of the install for you guys. But this is the finished product. All righty, fellas. We got the engine in. Harry moved so quick. I wasn't able to get putting it in on camera, but this is where we That's are. That's why we call him the engine bandit <laughs> over there. He gets here early and... He knocks stuff out. So we got all the bell housing bolts in at the bottom. I Where? got last, these are bell housing bolts, which bolt the engine to the, um, the engine to the transmission. So we got all those in. Um, we got two more up top. And we got to still seat the, uh, in not, not seat, but bolt up the engine mounts. And just a lot of little knickknack stuff. But the engine is in. Can I, get a little, uh, I see it up there. What? The engine. Oh, yeah. All right. Hey guys and gals, just got the engine put back in. Um, Just finished topping it off with oil. Let us see your work. Yeah. Where well, you got Harry's work. Yeah, Harry's work. He spent about 10 hours putting it back in. Um, now this wasn't a tutorial. Yeah, in tutorial. This was just like a follow along. So I didn't cover each and every detail. And I'm gonna chop it up. So it's gonna be a lot longer than that. I actually spent a lot of time and taking my time putting this engine together. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to show the process of putting it in because I have a lot of work back in the shop. Super and busy. Down, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, before I start the vehicle, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the oil. Um, put the right oil in these trucks. It says it on the cap for a reason. 0W20. 0W20. Do not put anything else in there. Um, I always think the engineers kind of know what they're doing when they design engines. They design it for this oil. Do not put 530, 1030, none of that stuff. Make sure these engines are very finicky. Make sure you're using good quality oil. Mobile One, um, extended performance, advanced, full synthetic. Ooh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> so please put the right oil in your truck. It will last you a lifetime. Um, did I leave anything out, sweetie? I no, think I about covered it. it all. Let's crank it up and see what yeah, it sounds let's like. Crank it up and see how it runs. Get in it. Yep. So, I am very happy with the outcome of this truck. It just need to be driven now. Let everything seat, seat in place. Seat in place. I just want to go on record and say my man is the man. Because, you know, a lot of people can't take an engine apart and then put it all back together. Like Every we, screw went back it, in here. We go behind a lot of janky mechanics, and you're the man. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. <laughs> so hey, Harry. I don't know where yeah, Harry's Harry is. Harry left us. So right. I'm going to close on up and take it for a quick drive and... See what she did. All right, we'll see you guys on the next video, babe. Yep, we'll Alex the Car Doctor out. Remember, hit that like button. It really helps me out. And hey, if you want to buy me a beer, I'm gonna put it down in the link in the link uh, somewhere description. description. And hey, I love drinking beer. <laughs> Not too much. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Bud Light. <laughs> Bud Light. See you guys on the next video.